and uh, start uh, just kind of introducing what we're going to be talking about here today. And by the time we probably get to the meat of things, have a few more people to sign on. Um, uh, my name is Jim White, everybody. And uh, again, welcome back to our uh, discussion of um, what EdgeX is about, in particular deep dives on particular topics out there in our EdgeX environment. Um, today's discussion is going to be about the command microservice. Um, we're going to learn about its purpose, going to take a look at why there is a separate uh, microservice for commands. As we get into it here, you might start to have questions about that. So hopefully we'll try to address that issue. Uh, we'll look at the makeup of the technology behind the command microservice. So we're going to look at the libraries and the tools used um, that make up uh, command microservice. And you can see a lot of similarities if you've attended any of the other sessions to the other microservices we have in our environment so far. We're going to do uh, a look at the APIs as we have across all the microservices. And if the demo gods are with us here today, we'll actually give you a little bit of a demo here. Command microservices is one of the, kind of my favorite services from the standpoint that it starts to bring a lot of the pieces of EdgeX together. If you, if you understand the command microservice and what it's about, how it works, you start to have a pretty good appreciation about how all these microservices come together because it really is the bridge between um, applications and devices, particularly in, in how to get things actuated. So we'll talk about that today. We'll take a look at some configuration settings for the command microservice. Then we're gonna wrap up with um, just kind of a brief uh, project status update. I wanted to give everybody who's on the call who may not be participating in a lot of the working groups, just kind of a lay down of what's happening in the project. A lot of great work are being done by a lot of folks out there. Want to kind of get you up to speed. We won't take a lot of time on that, but just hit the highlights. And then as always, leave some time for your questions um, about anything related to EdgeX. It might be about the command service, but it might be about anything in general. We'll try and get those uh, answered for you as best we can as well. Uh, so with that in mind here, let's see if I can move us along. Maybe I can, maybe I can't, there we go. So again, uh, Jim White, everybody, um, you might take note of my email address here. Uh, we can uh, discuss that to, at the end of the discussion here as well. If you need to get in contact with me um, about any question, we've got lots of ways to do that, but my email is open to you as well if you want to send uh, a question my way directly. Um, so big picture, we're going to be talking about, as I mentioned, the command microservice. Uh, we have done a lot of discussions here through the Tech Talks over the past weeks around the core services. We've talked about uh, core data. Uh, we've talked about metadata. Uh, we've talked about metadata in a couple of parts. In fact, uh, Tyler Cox, my um, coworker, uh, last week discussed metadata and things like device profiles and how device services and metadata work together to essentially allow EdgeX to know what devices, what sensors you have connected out there. Um, command microservice, as you see, it's got that arrow in the diagram pointing down. This is what applications at the top of uh, the EdgeX environment or things outside of EdgeX environment use to communicate with those devices and sensors. It's what we use to actuate things on a device or a sensor. So a very critical task inside the EdgeX picture. And as I mentioned, kind of the, the bridge point between the north and the south side in terms of getting things accomplished. So if you understand command, you usually have a pretty good grasp of what's going on at EdgeX. So we'll try and cover that in uh, obviously some detail today. So what is its role? Well, as I just mentioned, um, the command microservice, otherwise known as the CC microservice or command and control microservice, this is what um, allows for the issuance of commands or actions or actuations, use whatever word you'd like there, down to devices or sensors on the behalf of, well, it may be on behalf of another microservice in the EdgeX environment. Uh, for example, if you take a look at our rules engine, that's one of the microservices we have out there right now. Uh, the rules engine, when it wants to, to accomplish something with a sensor, say for example, detects that the temperature is too hot for something and it needs to shut off a motor, it would actually send its request down through the command a microservice. The rules engine doesn't talk directly to sensors or devices, it goes through the command microservice. It would also, that is the command service, would also be used by other applications that may exist either in the same system that EdgeX is located, or it might be something that's off box. For example, it might be a system management facility. It might be um, some other application that's, that's running there 
on the edge. These other applications would call on the command service to again actuate, again shut off that motor or raise the temperature on the uh, thermostat, whatever the case might be. And lastly, the command service might be used by external systems. If you had some sort of machine intelligence running in the cloud or in your enterprise application, chances are pretty good that eventually they're going to want to make a call down to uh, some sort of a sensor device. Again, they would use the command service to do that. The reason we do that, the reason we offer a command service is to help obfuscate all of the protocols, all the device paraphernalia that goes on at the south side so that anything in the application layer, anything that's using EdgeX as a facility to communicate with those devices and sensors has a one place to go, a one-stop shop to issue commands and to do so in an agnostic fashion. In other words, protocol format of data agnostic fashion. If you speak command, you speak to any device or uh, service sensor out there, you don't have to worry about what that particular protocol of choice is or what that format is to speak to that device or sensor. Now, what the command service also does, in addition to kind of providing this normalized common way and maybe a simplified way to communicate with the device or a sensor, it, it also does so in a way that is very familiar to many of us as developers. Um, when you think about um, actuating things on a device or a sensor, that's a little bit of a misnomer because you think about maybe turning something on or off. That's what we call a put request. Uh, essentially, we're using the HTTP language here, the REST API language here to, to talk about communicating with sensors or devices to help give you again a very simple way to think about how to make requests of the devices or sensors. But there might be circumstances where you want to get information from a device or sensor directly, not through the sensor feed that's coming up through our core data where the collection of data is happening on a scheduled basis, but you need to get the information right now. For example, you may want to go to a thermostat and say, give me what the uh, setting set point is for the uh, air conditioning right now, or give me what the temperature is right now. We call that a get command. So get commands are all about getting data back from a device or a sensor, where a put command is all about sending an action down to a device or sensor. So in actuality, put is kind of like the actuation where get is a retrieval mechanism. So we try to, to normalize not only the language and the format used to communicate with devices or sensors through this uh, command uh, microservice, but we also kind of try to nom nominally make it uh, very similar to say an HTTP call in order to, to get that happen. Lastly, what the command uh, service does for us is um, it does not act alone. It is just a facilitator. It has to work with uh, metadata to know and understand what devices are actually out there and connected. It has to work with the device service uh, to actually send a command down to a device or sensor. It doesn't actually talk to a sensor directly. It has to go through its managing device service to do that. And of course, it never communicates directly with that device or sensor because even the command service doesn't know about all those protocols. Again, that's the job of the device service out there. So it is a facilitator. It is, it is if you will, the universal translator ring about how EdgeX works in communicating some sort of request down to a device or service from, again, Northside or other applications. Now, importantly, uh, we get this question a lot in our community, and that is, you know, why do we even have a, a command microservice? You've got this device service out there. Couldn't I communicate directly with the device service? In fact, there is a device service API out there. Or if you had the information uh, in metadata, why, why didn't we just make metadata the facility to send commands? Well, the, the reason uh, is, I guess directly we could say yes, you, you could look at um, a direct mechanism to communicate with, say, a device through the device service or know more about the, um, the information that a, uh, a sensor device has through something like core data or metadata. But the reason that we built the command microservice was really to start to provide a layer of protection around devices and sensors and also the device services that are out there. In other words, what the command microservice does is it offers us a place to inflect security and obfuscation around what's at the south side. In other words, we can start to look at the command service as a mechanism to say, from an application standpoint, let me see what type of request you're making and make sure that maybe you're authorized to do that. 
or let me see what type of request you're making. And if, for example, you're asking to superheat a nuclear reactor, we probably don't want that to happen. So we could actually start to build in something like rules into the command service or some sort of organization around what to make sure of before we allow that actuation actually go down to the device service or device or sensor. It could also allow us to aggregate and start to organize requests. For example, let's say that you want to um, facilitate some sort of application where you're doing two things at one time. You want to uh, go and shut off the electricity and then open an access panel, some um, door that's automated on an access panel so that workers can get in and actually work on an electrical system. You probably want to make sure that those are done in some sort of order. You want to shut off the electricity first and then open the access panel. If we're looking at multiple sensors or multiple devices out there, trying to orchestrate this uh, across multiple devices or sensors and multiple device services gets to be a little bit tricky. So the command microservice could allow that kind of aggregation organization to occur. And we may also want to filter some sort of commands. Again, thinking about some commands that may be dangerous, those would be ones that maybe we say, whoa, 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 you know, there's probably some security associated with that. But there might be also a little bit more, let's say, just simple types of things we want to filter. And that is, let's say, for example, you're sending the command to set the cooling point to a thermostat to 72 degrees, and you send that 99 times, and you do that all within, say, a couple of seconds. Uh, maybe the command microservice can say, uh, we got the message. We don't need the 70-second issuing of that command and bottleneck the entire system just to issue that command 72 times because some application wasn't smart enough to figure out you only needed to send that once. So the key term here is that the command microservice provides that kind of protection or provides the wrappering or provides the facilities to where we can start to build in other capabilities and protect some of those devices and sensors out there. Now the operative word here too, folks, is could. The command service today doesn't do all those things. It provides a facility to do that. We thought about how to start to intertwine that. And that's where we think also some value adds by companies that you all represent might start to offer that capability as well. But the facility is there through the command microservice to start to do those kind of things. Okay, so now we know a little bit about what the command microservice does. Let's start to learn a little bit about how it gets its job done. As with many or most of the microservices in the EdgeX community today, uh, they have all been built with Java and the Spring Framework and using Spring Boot. Um, they are all built using Spring NVC uh, to facilitate the REST commands today. Uh, you'll notice that there is no database associated with the, um, the command microservice. Things like the core data and core metadata microservices have Mongo associated with them. The command microservice operates on the basis of a data-driven system, but it gets that data by communicating with other microservices. So for example, to get information about what devices are connected, it has to go to the metadata uh, microservice. So no database directly associated to command. Now we at Dell, we have actually started to build um, replacement microservices uh, using Golang. I think I've mentioned that before in some of the other tech talks, uh, and we hope to have some of those, including the command Golang microservice done sometime maybe before the end of the year. And the idea there is to help maybe shorten, uh, or I should say reduce the, the footprint and to um, reduce also the uh, spin up time and the performance of these uh, microservices. Java has been great for our enterprises, but may not always be optimal for edge computing. So look forward to that coming up in the future. The API shouldn't change. It'll just be a swap out of the implementing technology. Now let's talk a little bit about um, what the command service offers in terms of how it gets its job done. The first thing to realize with regard to the command microservice, it is a facility much like metadata because it has to know a lot about the metadata of devices and sensors that are connected. It is a facility that allows a client and that client could again be any other microservice in EdgeX. It could be a, a service outside of EdgeX. It could be an application. It could be a cloud system. It provides a means for a client to call in, if you will, to the command microservice and get a listing of what are the various devices connected and what are the commands that I can issue to them. So if you will, it provides a facility to retrieve the available commands that are in EdgeX for any particular device. 
And as you can see by our sequence diagram here, again, the command service is a, a relatively dumb service from that regard. It doesn't actually have that information. It has to go to metadata to actually get that information out and provide back a list of the devices and their commands back to a client. We'll actually see this, if my demo gods are with me here, uh, we'll actually see this coming up in just a bit. So that's how a client can actually start to understand what commands could be issued down to devices or sensors. When it comes time to actually do a invoking of a command, uh, an actuation on a device or sensor, we do that in a similar fashion. We call them again, puts or gets, and the reason for that is we're a REST-based API in EdgeX right now, so a client, again, that could be uh, some off uh, EdgeX application, could be something in the cloud, it could be a microservice. It will make a put request in this example down to the command microservice. Again, the command microservice will work with metadata to understand what it is that's actually out there. In other words, it will validate the request through metadata. And then once it does have an indication that uh, the service, or I'm sure, sorry, the sensor device is actually there, that we have the ID and everything correct, and that that device or sensor is actually operational and, and administratively available, it will then issue a put request down to the actual device service that manages that device. And it's the device service that then translates that into the protocol format of choice for that device or sensor, gets a response back, and follows that up the chain back to our client. So again, the command microservice is more of a facilitator than anything else. But it's through that command service, as you see with this middle box, that we can do a lot of work with regard to providing protection and security, doing some intelligence in there to make sure that certain commands are not over-issued or commands that we think are very, very sensitive are handled as well. So that's a little bit about uh, the API set in the big macro picture about how they work. Let's get into a little bit of the details of the APIs here. So with the command microservice, again, we have a set of REST APIs, just like we saw with regard to core data, metadata. The API set on the command service is actually fairly straightforward, straightforward and a relatively small set. We have a number of get uh, calls that you can make, and you can get all the devices that are attached to EdgeX or an instance of EdgeX. And again, as I mentioned, this allows any application to essentially understand what devices are connected and also get their associated commands. In other words, what can I do with any one of those devices or sensors out there? You could do that by ID, and you can also do that by device name. We can get the uh, commands by, again, by device e ID or name. So this allows us to understand what things I can actuate on a device or sensor. And then of course, the important one is we wanna be able to issue a command back down to a device or a sensor. So this is where we'll call on a motor to shut off or to set the cooling point on a thermostat. And again, in this particular case, there are both gets and puts. A get is an idea that when we do a get, that we uh, are actually making a request to get information or retrieve information back from that sensor device. A put is actuating something like a motor to turn it on or to turn it off. So we're using kind of HTTP philosophy there to be able to actuate back down to a device or a sensor. Again, we'll take a look at these APIs coming up in just a second. There are some additional REST APIs that are on the command microservice out there. Um, we can set the admin state. Now, the intention of this particular request along with the next one, the set, whoops, sorry again, I'm on the screen too fast there. Um, the request to set admin state and set op state probably need to be explained a little bit. So the idea here is there are two states on devices or sensors and including uh, the device service. We have an admin state. Uh, you can either lock or unlock um, a particular device or sensor. What that says is you want to um, maybe make an updated device or sensor. You want to tell the rest of the system that you want to, um, to shut that off and not make it accessible for a little bit. You can lock the... Uh, block that device or sensor with an admin state call. Op state is, is it there? Is it actually operational? Do we see it? Maybe, for example, device becomes unplugged from EdgeX. Then operationally, it would be shown as unavailable or um, not, not there. We actually have the ability for setting both through the command service and getting both through the command service. And the idea there is we facilitate systems like system management capability in the future 
with these uh, mechanisms so that those services may also be able to communicate a little bit with the devices and sensors and be able to get information about those devices and sensors through this common API set. It's envisioned that these obviously would be APIs that would be heavily secured in the future. You don't want everybody just setting your admin state of your device or sensors, but the, um, the API sets to set these are very similar to what we see as regarding actuation on command. So we put them in the, uh, the same microservice. By the way, um, those admin states and op states are reflected in a device service as well. So when you make this request, the device service has to know that and has to reflect that same information in a similar fashion. And lastly, with all microservices, we have a ping uh, API. You can ping the command microservice just to know if that particular microservice is up and operational or not. So that's our API set. Let's maybe uh, take a look at this in a bit of a demo, kind of bring it all together for us here. So it could kind of be uh, difficult to see, you know, how actuation commands are actually reflected through all these services. You've maybe uh, sat in through the discussion on metadata and Tyler last week provided a little information about devices and profiles and metadata. Now we add on a command to the top of that. How do all these kind of work? What's this thing called a profile? How do I get commands out of all this? Let's see if we can't maybe uh, shed some light on that through this little demo. And at the same time, we're going to be actually uh, using the virtual device service out there and allowing you to see with the virtual device service what the, um, what the device profile for that virtual device service is, then how to get the information about what commands are available in metadata that have been provided by that profile, then actually see the commands exposed through something like a device service, and finally see them uh, reflected in the command microservice and how you can actually start to issue commands through that API set. So if you will, we're kind of really starting to bring all of the uh, microservices at the core layer together to pull this little trick off in this demo. So let's see if we can't uh, make this happen and see if our demo gods are with us here today, gang. So what I'm showing on the screen right now is one of the device profiles that is embedded in the virtual device service. In particular, it's a profile that is set up to mimic a KMC BACnet thermostat. And if you look at this profile, and as you uh, may have heard last week when uh, Tyler Cox spoke, uh, the device profile provides all of the information, the metadata about what types of data a particular device or sensor has to offer, and then how to communicate with it. Importantly, in this particular profile, if we scroll down a little bit here, I'm gonna go scroll and whiz and why, by here quite a bit, one of the things we're going to see in any particular device profile is this thing called commands. And as you would hopefully assume, what that's about is what types of commands can be issued to this particular device or sensor. In this particular case, as one example, you will see in a KMC thermostat circumstance, what we can do is get the current temperature. So I can get and understand what temperature that particular KMC thermostat is seeing right now by issuing this particular command down to that device or sensor, in this case, the, the KMC thermostat. Now, there's a lot of language in there. There's a lot of um, YAML that helps describe that. And that's what describes and provides the metadata to EdgeX about how these particular devices and sensors work. So how is that then manifested up through our APIs, through metadata, through device services, and ultimately through the command service. Let's take a look at that. So let me bring over another screen here, gang. What I've got running on my system right now is EdgeX, at least the majority of the EdgeX microservices to include core data, metadata, command, and the virtual device service. And to prove that, I'm going to do a, a standard little API call on core data to see the um, event count coming through the core data system up from a virtual device service. You can see the number there is a whopping 1,700 records. So you can see that it actually is, uh, is changing um, and data is flowing up through EdgeX right now on the part of the virtual device service. One of the devices, again, connected is the um, virtual device service, that KMC thermostat device service. And in fact, what I've made here is I'm going to make an API call into the metadata API service for the device that just happens to have this ID associated to it, which is the ID right now for that KMC thermostat 
inside of edgex and if i refresh the screen you can actually see that this is live demo this is actually uh, hopefully working code and what that is is it's a hit of the metadata api asking it to give us all the information it knows about this kmc thermostat and lo and behold we'd see the information reflected exactly as we would have seen in the yaml file that device profile in particular if i scroll down a bit here let me get down to our command section and you can see there's a lot of data in there but ultimately here we go we see a list of commands and one of the commands is current temperature notice that there's now an id associated to it as that profile information gets sucked up by metadata each command is now given a command id a reference id that edgex uses to actually start to issue commands when it needs to Notice also it's given a path here. That is a path to a device service, in this case our virtual device service, to actually facilitate that command on that device service. In other words, if I use that path and I call at the host name and port address of the device services that manage this, this particular sensor, I can actually invoke and request the current temperature. Let's actually do that. I bring up another browser here, and I know it might be a little bit difficult to see, but in my URL there, that's the exact path I just showed you to the device, in this case, the BACnet thermostat being managed by the virtual device service. And when I issue that command, what I get back is the get data call for current temperature on the KMC thermostat being managed by the virtual device service and it thinks it's really chilly right now remember the virtual device service just throws out random numbers but it thinks it's really chilly right now it thinks it's minus 61 degrees but you get the idea of how now this api set is coming together now that's a direct call on the device service we really don't want that to happen and as we go forward our security systems are going to enforce the fact that that's a very protected call that we only want the command service to make but you can get a sense of how the command service is going to actually make this call for us and get back the same information and provide that to an application. Now, let's go on to look at if we make a call into the command microservice right now, and if I make a call onto the command microservice for the same device ID that I showed you that was in metadata for the KMC thermostat, what do I get back? Well, I get back a lot of the same information. Again, the command microservice is just communicating with metadata to find out what devices are connected, how can I communicate with them, what data they offer. In this particular case, it's telling us that at this device ID, there is this thermostat, this KMC thermostat, and lo and behold, look again what it offers. It says we have, whoops, we have a set of commands, and one of those commands is for the current temperature. Now here we also get a URL a URL that provides more details and a specific command URL that we would actually call through the command service to, in this case, get the current temperature. So this is the actual URL an application would call to get current temperature going through the device service down to the device to get a response back. This would be the unprotected URL or the semi-protected URL, if you like, on the part of EdgeX to allow any application northbound, in the cloud, within the system that we're operating to actually get data back from a device or sensor. You'll see a lot of similarities in there. The API is structured like a, a, an HTTP request, but you'd see a device ID in there. You actually see the, the command ID in there. If we actually use that URL and make a physical call now to the command microservice, we'll get back that information you can see the temperature now on our KMC thermostat has changed and now thinks it's minus 86. But this was a call to the command service, which then went, checked all the requirements against metadata, then made a call to the device service, gets a response back from the device through the device service, back up to command and back up to us as the client here. In fact, if I actually issue the command directly on the device service, and the command service fast enough next to each other, we should actually see these numbers are reflective of one another. In other words, it's actually giving back the same data as we would expect in any kind of real world circumstance. Remember, we're working with a virtual device service in this case. So these are virtual devices built out of software and random number generators, but you get the idea about how this would work 
under a real world circumstance. So the demo gods are with me. We actually uh, saw how the command service actually operates. I have this whole demo arranged in a little text file that I'll make available so you can actually actuate, actuate this in your own environment down to a virtual device service. The only difference in the instructions here will be, you know, this was the uh, device ID for my particular device. When you start up your EdgeX system, the ID for your virtual device is gonna change a little bit, but you can change those out and see and, and play with the same API set to start to appreciate how commands can be issued down to devices and sensors. Okay, let's see, where are we at? So we've gone through a demo. We start to see now how the command service works, how it works with metadata and the device services to, uh, to pull off our, dem uh, our, our uh, actuation down to um, devices or sensors. There are some configuration settings in the command microservice as there are with all of the microservices in EdgeX. Although I will tell you, there's nothing extraordinary in the command configuration. In other words, yep, there's standard uh, configurations for where we want the um, service to run in terms of port and what the location of the other associated microservices are, but these are all configuration settings that you would find in each one of our microservices. So again, the command microservice is actually a pretty simple little guy. His duties are very, very big, but his configuration and the job he does is, is some that are pretty easy to understand once you understand how it operates inside of all of the other microservices. You can find this information in the GitHub. In other words, you can find the application properties file about how to set these things in the, uh, in the application property file out there in, in GitHub. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that kind of wraps up the discussion of the command microservice. We'll give you a second here uh, to start typing any chat questions you have and we'll unmute lines here uh, to get your questions. But while we're getting ready for that, as you're thinking about maybe some things with regard to command microservice, let me just kind of give you a quick update on where we're at with EdgeX and our project status and what are, the, what are some of the significant work that's going on right now. First off, you should know that we are up to now 60 companies enrolled in the um, EdgeX Foundry open source project through the Linux Foundation. Uh, I think we started off just above 50. I think we were like 51 when we started this back in June. So we're gaining a, a lot of momentum and we're really uh, thankful for every one of your participations and, and certainly looking forward to working with uh, a bigger and stronger community as we go forward. As many of you are aware, we are all focused right now. That is all the developer community that's associated with EdgeX right now is focused on the what we're calling the Barcelona release. This will be our first community release. Uh, Dell, as you know, contributed a lot of source code, had a working application uh, called Fuse that we donated that became EdgeX. But this is gonna be our first community release. We're gonna have this out for um, the IoT Solutions World Congress, which is being held in Barcelona, that's the release name. And that's gonna happen between October 3rd and the 5th. Um, if you take a look at the wiki site out there for the project, you'll see a list of what we call the MVP or feature set that we're gonna be uh, showing as part of that release. And you should also know that the tech community is also gonna use that event to hold uh, uh, its next uh, community meeting. We just met in London a few weeks ago to kind of outline that MVP and what was gonna be in this release. We'll use a tech meeting at that um, Barcelona conference to kind of set up the agenda for our next release, which will be in the spring. And we are at this point codenaming that the California release. So if you have interest in what's gonna be going into EdgeX going forward, stay tuned or even better, join us in Barcelona and, uh, and participate as part of that uh, conference. Um, we've got working groups right now pedaling very hard to get their uh, work done for Barcelona. Uh, progress is being made uh, considerably there and uh, a lot of good work going on. And at this point, uh, no early issues or no early warnings. We think we're gonna make that MVP. We'll update you as we go. We also have a lot of work being done in terms of uh, filling out more of the processes and documentation around EdgeX. Uh, we're still very nascent in getting a lot of our builds and things uh, working up. Uh, continuous integration and testing is still ongoing, but a lot of that work is ongoing simultaneously as we're actually working on the code and getting our processes and procedures in place with the Linux Foundation, getting our tools in place with the Linux Foundation DevOps community. So you can look forward to a lot more of that documentation showing, showing up on our wiki site as well in the next few weeks. 
Uh, lastly here, before I start to take your questions, uh, I am uh, I am kind of soliciting some opinions here, trying to find out if these talks are still useful to you all, if you have any suggestions about where we need to go or what we need to include or not include in upcoming talks. Uh, right now, we still plan to kind of cover the last of the core services, which is the config and reg registry microservice, then start to head northward a little bit, start to look at things like our export microservices, but I want your feedback. Um, want to make sure that these are still valuable to you, that you still want them to continue. Uh, if you can, let us know one way or uh, another to let us know if these are our talks that uh, you feel are valuable and, and what direction you'd like them to take in. Uh, they do require a little bit of work, so um, want to make sure that they are something that people still um, find valuable. Again, email me or uh, use Rocket Chat or any of the other channels of communication within the project to let us know. Um, and if you're saying they're not useful, that's okay. That's just as important as knowing that they are uh, valuable out there. Okay, with that, folks, I'm going to uh, start to take any questions you might have about the project or about the command microservice. And I'm going to start off. I see that uh, Riaz has posted a question about uh, information, um, a little bit more detail, or, or, or if you will, repeat the uh, ideas about the admin state and op state. And just for some context, let me go back to the API set that we have out there on that, just so I can kind of um, use that as a reference point. So within Edgex, the, the thought process is, and in fact, this is a, a pretty common uh, mechanism used in a lot of systems. In fact, uh, Mark Hammond's actually introduced this into Edgex uh, or our Fuse project as we were considering the APIs. In uh, a lot of systems out there, there is this consideration of two different states for things, admin states and op state. So when you have something like a microservice or you have a device or a sensor in our case, you, you wanna have these two states that um, give a better understanding to other things in the environment about what's up, what's not up, what's available, what's not available. What the admin state is all about is letting people know that you have on purpose disabled, locked, if you will, that particular device, sensor, maybe it's a service, that thing, whatever it happens to apply to. In the case of the command microservice, when we're talking about the admin state, we're talking about a device or a sensor. It allows us to lock or disable that particular sensor or device as far as the rest of the system is concerned. And you want to do that because maybe you want to um, upgrade a device or a sensor. Uh, maybe you're changing out its firmware. Maybe you want to, um, to lock it down for a second because something's happening that you need to understand more about. You don't want something uh, triggering it while you're doing it. Maybe somebody's got their hand inside the motor and you certainly don't want somebody activating the motor if, uh, if maintenance is going on, things of that nature. So admin state is a mechanism for a device or sensor in the case of command API to be disabled on purpose by the system so as not to be able to actuate it anymore. And the command microservice actually checks that. If you try to issue a command down to a device or sensor and the admin state is that unlocked, it will not allow that command to go forward. Op state, on the other hand, is a mechanism used to say, up from the device or sensor in this case, we're not getting any connection. We're not getting any kind of request through. The information's not coming through. Data is not flowing to it. There's something wrong here typically. And that's not something that is often manually triggered. That is something that is usually bubbling up from the device or sensor. Now we provide an API set to actually control that because there might be circumstances on the part of something like a system management facility where you want to actually set the op state. You know, you are updating the firmware from a system management system um, and you want to maybe set the op state to its, to its being down while that is going on. Um, so it's a little bit of an unusual circumstance where you'd actually set the op state. More generally, you want to get the op state to understand if there's something going on or something wrong with regard to that device or sensor. Again, admin state and op state are things you'll see associated to devices or sensors, but you'll also see those are states associated to different microservices within EdgeX as well. So we have a good question. Hope that answered it for you. Um, let's see, we got a question from Tony. Uh, kind of like network interface in Linux, exactly right. Uh, desired state and, and actual state uh, are, are very similar kinds of thought processes in Linux. In fact, uh, there is an IEEE standard out there that uh, Mark Hammond's borrowed from, I know, uh, to kind of discuss these. And I don't have the reference to that IEEE standard with me, but uh, 
contact me and we could certainly get you that. Um, the, the concept stems from that. Um, the idea that one is kind of, I want to set, the other is what is the system saying to me about that particular um, device or sensor? Other questions anybody has? And folks, if you, if you want to ask a question uh, verbally, uh, remember you are all probably uh, in a mute state right now. You have to unmute yourself in the, in the microphone land out there to ask that question. Silence being golden here. Okay. I will uh, post up here uh, one other time too, gang, um, just while we're letting any other question that might come in. Again, please, please, please let us know um, what your thinking is out there with regard to not only Tech Talks, but if you have any other questions, I'd be happy to, uh, to take those on things like Rocket Chat as well. Um, but let us know how we're doing on these Tech Talks, if they're helpful or not. Sound like hey, some microphone is open. Yeah, go ahead. This is Salim. Hey, uh, Salim. I find these extremely useful, so thank you for the, taking the time. Um, what what does it mean when you set the op state when it's inherently due to let's say working while it's inherently not when you have that kind of contradiction who, which which prevails? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and as I mentioned, Salim, it would it would probably not be the type of API that ultimately, as we go forward with edgex, would be open to everybody. Um, we put it in there because obviously there may be circumstances, at least we perceive there might be a circumstance whereby uh, as something near and dear to your heart, uh, a system management facility may need to set that uh, because it is doing something on the part of edgex that it needs to, to say, hey, the operational state of this is down. For example, if your system management facility was provisioning and unprovisioning devices and something from upon high through the system management system is going to literally take that sensor offline for a while. We saw or envisioned a need where the system management might need to set the op state to disabled while it did its work, then maybe start to clean out the data or, or somehow otherwise um, uh, unprovision that device or sensor, but you know while that process is in, is ongoing, there may need to be an op state set. But you are absolutely right; it would not be the intention of Edgex to offer that as some sort of API, largely to the rest of the uh, Edgex microservices or to some sort of application to be able to do that, unless there was some sort of kind of a well, overarching well, need. I mean, the reason I ask, I mean, the thought I have is that sounds like an admin set. Um, and op should be autonomous. Is this indicating? It could be. Yeah, we, we there might be um, there may be cases where administratively we we um, want to do everything from an admin state. We're going to leave that to some extent to to your working group uh, to say you know hey whoa whoa let's let's not even offer that as an API set. Uh, let's only have an admin set. Uh, it's there. Um, we could also see where it may need to exist, but there would be a lot heavier security restrictions on it. Um, so uh, we kind of offered the option to have, and it was a lot easier to put it in uh, and then take it out than, than have to retrofit it later. So uh, something that I think uh, you and your group can, can discuss, Liam, and determine, along with the security group, you know, what makes the most sense there. Got it. Thank you. Yeah. Other questions? Uh, let's see, Riyadh's got a question. Uh, in current version, uh, are operations or command service uh, logged as events? Um, yeah, great question, Riyadh. We do log, the command microservice uh, does log whenever a, a command is issued, whether it be a get or a put. It does that logging to the through the logging service. Um, and of course, we also have the notification um, and alerts um, API, which could be used to actually issue a notification or alert on a command. We didn't put that in by default, but there's certainly nothing that would prohibit that. And the APIs are already there and good hooks in place to do that. So there would be potentially lots of different ways to both log and alert. And when you issue a get command, a get command is a request of a device or a sensor to give its data back up through the command service. Well, that is actually also the job of what happens when a device service communicates data through 
the core data service. So what we also did there is we have, when the device service replies back to the command service on a GET request, it actually sends that data on up to core data at the same time. So in actuality, the data that you're getting through a GET request on command is also, or could also be sent through to core data. There's actually a configuration option in the device service to say, when a command GET happens, do you want me to use this data and send that through to core data as well? So that would be yet one more way that, if you will, an event uh, of information about what commands have been issued could actually be traced or tracked a bit. So lots of different options there. Um, again, um, at this point, nothing is prohibited. Lots of things are enabled. We'd have to kind of discuss what other options uh, might be needed going forward. Hope that answers the question, Riaz. Any others? Fantastic, folks. Well, um, it is uh, it is Miller time here in the central time zone. I'm ready for my beer. I hope uh, for those of you who are uh, not eating your Rice Krispies or your cereal this morning, I've upset you with <laughs> upset your stomach there. But for a lot of us, I think it's uh, probably about ready to wrap up. I'll give one last call for questions, comments, or concerns. Okay, if not, uh, Brett, we'll let you uh, go ahead and uh, shut us off recording-wise, and uh, this will be available out on the wiki. The slides are actually already available out there on the wiki. I'm sure uh, Brett, as he always does, does a great job of posting the meeting recording out there soon, as soon as it's available. And we will talk to you again in a week's time, gang. We'll probably look at the config and registry service next week. Thanks much, and have a good one. Thanks, Jim.